welcome to Instant GMP. Welcome to the Instant GMP Compliance Series presentation on how to improve batch production records. The quality and manufacturing experts at Instant GMP prepared this GMP Compliance Series to review good manufacturing practices and CGMP compliance for manufacturing FDA regulated products. Our experts hope these presentations will help you avoid any CGMP compliance issues in your facility. A common reason for the FDA to issue warning letters was due to poorly executed batch records. This presentation describes how to improve batch production record procedures. Many of the common problems found by FDA inspectors center on incomplete batch records. The FDA expects to see details on how firms record the production of the products and how they make decisions when changes are made during the production process. Firms are required to make and keep written procedures for specifications, quality control operations, master production records, return goods, and equipment. The FDA often cited manufacturers for failing to provide written documentation that specifications were set and that testing was completed before using a component or ingredient in a batch. In many cases, there was no written master production records for each unique formulation or the batch production record did not follow the master production record. The FDA expects documentation to show that batches were properly made and that the quality control personnel performed their review and disposition of products at the time of manufacturing. Batch production records are needed to document when each batch was produced, what lots of raw materials and ingredients were used in the batch, and the product was made in compliance with the master production record. The record must show that any deviations that occurred during manufacturing were investigated and resolved. These requirements will allow uniform batches that meet established quality requirements and specifications. If a problem occurs for, or a customer complaint is received after the batch gets to the market, the batch records can then be reviewed to assess the issue. A good batch record system keeps track of raw materials and ingredients that went into a batch and makes it easy to find a root cause, which can prevent the problem from happening again. The basics of CGMP manufacturing are actually pretty straightforward. Manufacturing instructions and procedures have to be clear and unambiguous. The manufacturing processes need to be clear, defined, and have controls at each critical step of the process. Manufacturing facilities must be designed to minimize cross-contamination and mix-ups. Operators have to be trained and their training must be documented. Records have to demonstrate that all required steps were taken and that any deviations to the written process were investigated by the QA unit and resolved before the batch was dispositioned. Definitions are useful in understanding how good batch records can be constructed. A component is any substance used in the manufacturing of a finished good, including substances that may not appear in the finished batch. An ingredient means any component used in manufacturing that will be in the finished batch. Ingredient includes active pharmaceutical ingredients, dietary ingredients, and raw materials. In process material means any material that is processed before becoming part of a batch. Batch means a specific quantity of a product that is uniform, that is intended to meet specifications for identity, purity, strength, composition, and that is produced during a specified time period according to a single manufacturing record during the same cycle of manufacture. Batch number, lot number, or control number means any distinctive group of letters, numbers, or symbols, or any combination of them, which will allow the complete history of the manufacturing, packaging, labeling, and or holding of a batch to be determined. Theoretical yield means the quantity that would be produced at any appropriate step of manufacturing or packaging of a particular dietary supplement, based upon the quantity of components or packaging to be used in the absence of any loss or error in actual production. Actual yield is the total quantity of product measured at the end of the manufacturing of a batch. The percent yield is calculated by dividing the actual yield by the theoretical yield and multiplying by 100. The percent loss is 100 minus the percent yield. In order to comply with the CGMP requirements, a master production record for manufacturing, packaging, or labeling must be prepared and followed. There has to be one master production record for each unique formulation of a product and batch size. This will allow you to ensure uniformity in the finished product from batch to batch. Each batch production record, or batch record, has to follow its corresponding master production record. Current GMPs require that an appropriate batch record be followed every time a batch is manufactured. The batch production record must include complete information for the production and control of each batch. What must the batch record include? A batch lot or control number that must be set as a unique identifier of each batch. Each component has to have a unique identifier and the weight or measure that was added to the batch. Each piece of equipment and each processing line used in producing the batch has to be identified and that the batch production record has to include the date and time of the maintenance, cleaning, and sanitizing of those equipment and processing lines or a cross-reference to the records where the information is kept. 
the batch record has to include a statement of the actual yield and a statement of the percent of theoretical yield at each appropriate phase of processing. In-processing controls includes monitoring the steps where control is necessary to ensure the quality of the finished batch. Each firm must determine if in-process specifications are met and detect any deviation or unanticipated occurrences. A C of A from a qualified vendor can be included in the batch to verify information except for the identity testing which should be done every time they are received. You will need a scientifically valid method for each specification for which testing or examination is required. Batch production records must also include the actual results obtained during any monitoring operation. This can be written into the batch record or a cross-reference to where the data is stored can be provided. If an outside laboratory performed the testing, a copy of the test results or a cross-reference must be included in the batch record. The batch production record must include an actual or representative label or a cross-reference to the location of the actual or representative label. There must be documentation that quality control personnel reviewed the batch record, approved or rejected any reprocessing or repackaging and dispositioning of the batch. A deviation can be an unanticipated event that occurs during production and could possibly result in adulteration of a component of a dietary supplement. Pre-planned deviations from the BPR may be written and approved as well. Deviations should be noted in the batch production record along with documentation that describes either the reasoning for the planned deviation or the investigation into the root cause of an unplanned event. Actions taken to correct the deviation and prevent a recurrence of the deviation must be identified. This information should be recorded in a corrective action and preventable action register so trends can be identified and resolution programs can be kept. The quality control unit will need to evaluate whether or not the deviation resulted in or could lead to the adulteration of a component, dietary supplement, packaging, or label to ensure the quality of the product. A batch cannot be reprocessed or approved for distribution without QA approval or a scientifically sound plan for acceptable in-process adjustments. Regulations prohibit the use of rejected ingredients unless the quality control unit determines that in-process adjustments are possible to correct the deviations or occurrence. Others may assist quality control personnel in gathering and considering information relevant to the review and decision, but quality control personnel must approve or reject all processes, written procedures, controls, tests, and examinations, and deviations. The review of a batch record must be done by the quality unit. This includes the review of records such as receiving records and determining whether each finished batch conforms to product specifications. The reviewer has to assure that no contamination occurred and that all manufacturer deviations were resolved. The final rule describes how a production and process control system has to be set up because only in-product testing can ensure the quality of the final product. The first step is to use high-quality components that meet well-defined specifications. The confirmation of the identity and other quality attributes of each component that will be used in manufacturing is required. In-process controls and specifications should be established for every step that is critical for the quality of the final product. Testing for potential contaminants should be conducted to prevent the batch from becoming adulterated. Every batch should be tested unless there is a well-defined sampling and testing program in place that works in conjunction with GMPs. Make sure that any tests or examinations are completed and recorded and then reviewed by quality control before the final product is released for distribution. QC or production personnel must monitor the in-process points, steps, or stages where control is necessary to ensure the quality of the finished batch. Perform in-process checks like capsule weights or tablet hardness and determine if the in-process specifications are not met. If not, record a deviation or any unanticipated occurrences. Quality personnel must conduct deviation investigations and make the disposition decisions. Meeting in-process specifications will help ensure that the final product specifications are met and that the product produced has the correct identity, purity, strength, and composition. Specifications must be established for any point where control in the manufacturing process ensures quality. For example, heating or cooling steps. If it is critical that a certain piece of equipment be cleaned and or sanitized after handling certain raw materials to ensure that there is no microbial contamination, then specifications have to be set and met. If the manufacturer fails to establish a specification for cleaning and or sanitizing after handling those raw materials, the product could become adulterated. Limits must be established for points where cross-contamination may adulterate the batch or where environmental hygiene is necessary to prevent adulteration of the finished batch. This is a sample electronic batch record screen where the instructions to the operator are displayed and fields are available to record results, comments, or deviations. The record retention time for records related to current GMP requirements correlate with the length of time that product complaints are likely to arise. The required time is two years beyond the date of distribution for dietary supplement products. Pharmaceutical products need to be stored for two years after the expiration date. For other products with shelf life date, the records must be kept for one year past the shelf life date. 
Packagers and labelers that return the product to the manufacturer for distribution are not required to keep separate records. There are many reasons that companies will want to adopt an electronic manufacturing system. They are more efficient than manual systems. For example, they can shrink or eliminate the redundant process of forms that occur in manual systems. They can trim time and cost compared to manually compiling and reviewing documentation. They can reduce errors, omissions, and deviations. Probably the most important advantage is that a transition to an electronic system can provide opportunities to reorganize and to update processes to make the whole plant work better. All of these benefits taken together result in increased throughput, quality, and margins. This presentation is just one of the many videos and webinars available on CGMP compliance. You can access the rest at the GMP Certification Resource Center. Thank you and have a wonderful day.